Hey everybody, welcome back to the cabin. I'm gonna be moving fast today because I have one day of sunshine and then some bad weather coming in. It's a busy week. I've got some guests coming up to the cabin this week. Probably my first uh, fireside chat, log jam interview, whatever we're calling them. You're gonna see something here behind me, which we've come as a surprise to, I think, just about everybody who commented on what they thought the roof type should be. Because even though I really appreciated all those comments and gave me a lot to consider and I was convinced one way or the other depending on the comments that I read. My wife came up with this idea and I liked it and we decided together to go some complete different direction and something that she's always wanted me to do on other projects that I haven't got around to doing. And I think this is the perfect place for it. I hope you like what we chose and I'd love to hear what you think about it.
this is just a test piece just tacking it up here to see what it looks like I think this is how I'm doing the ridge cap I want to see it from the ground and have to see what I need to fill in at the top of these battens but that's the general idea well I think I'm gonna wrap this video up right here reason being we've got rain coming in imminently and the predictions for this area this year are heavy snowfall like 50% more than usual is what they're predicting and I believe it with this warm weather the Great Lakes are still warm and when we have ice free Great Lakes especially Georgian Bay all winter long the clouds build up over Georgian Bay and then they blow over here and as they hit this higher ground they dump their load so I bet we're gonna have five six feet of snow here maybe even on the ground at times and I need to start looking around and cleaning up making sure I haven't left any tools on the ground get some of the excess like the cutoffs from the log somebody had a great idea they said I should make a cordwood uh, building out of them and I've got so many of them I could probably get at least one good wall so I think I'll do that so I need to get those stored somewhere out of the weather and uh, what else got a bunch of things I still need to finish off the outhouse behind you there I need to put in the logs the upright posts for the front porch and that's going oh, and chink the cabin so I need to finish collecting the moss and all that uh, clay which I'm going to have to do this week in case the ground starts freezing. So lots and lots of stuff to do. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to wrap this video up here for that reason. I'm just not going to get back to the computer all week to add more to the video. So I'll do that video tonight. Well, one more thing. This is Monday and I actually realized I posted a picture of the front of the cabin with the first couple of rows on here on Instagram on the story section so I don't know if anybody noticed that that kind of gave away the the roof type before I intended to uh, but I think what I'll do is I'll post some more pictures of this and the far side which I will likely get done well before the next video comes out uh, so I'll post some pictures on Instagram and give some updates to what's going on around here probably even the woodshed so so if you want to see what's going on here before the next video that's a good place to check or um, Facebook my self-reliance on Facebook so thanks again for watching. Look forward to seeing you next week up the cabin. Take care. A strong wind from the northwest was a signal that Indian summer was about to end. Overnight, the temperature dropped to 4 degrees Celsius. And the wind died down, literally the calm before the storm. The change in weather was a reminder to me to start preparing for a long cold winter ahead. Notice I've got tired eyes again this morning, which I often have. You know, a lot of nights I don't get a great night's sleep, which is not good for your health. Very important. But a lot of times I'm so excited about what I'm doing the next day that I wake up too early. If there's one thing I've learned uh, through observation of my own life and people around me is that having passion for something is one of the keys to happiness. I'm a very curious person by nature, so I have no lack of uh, inspiration or lack of... Uh, a passion for things and new things so, so I'm always trying out new things and I think that curiosity is what makes me happy and it keeps me motivated it keeps me inspired to get up in the morning and start something new you know I love sports as a kid I played soccer and hockey passionately but at the same time I want to spend a lot of time outdoors so I never became really great at one thing I was a pretty decent hockey player and soccer player I had had some successes there but I was missing practices and not going to some of the games even so that I could go hang out out outdoors so it impacted um, I guess my success in any one thing but because I've done so many things I'm so passionate about and so curious about so many things I'm always kind of moving on to that next thing and not having time maybe to fit as many people into my life as maybe others would prefer or that maybe would even be healthier for me, I'm not sure. But what I do know is that 
having excitement in my life, having something I can't wait to get up and do the next morning, it's so rewarding for me. It's so exciting. It's so uplifting. It, it's uh, I could never get depressed. I could never get bored because I'm just that type. I'm just curious. And I think everybody should try to find some of that passion. And it's different for everybody. Uh, for me, I've done everything from wood carving to hunting and fishing and canoeing and cabin building and sports and, and family, of course, which is right at the very top, which takes up a lot of my time. Well, I think we've become so comfortable indoors that we don't get out and don't experience discomfort, don't experience the wonders of nature. Again, listen to the birds and the squirrels and the chipmunks running around the leaves and it's just a really dynamic atmosphere out here, especially compared to you know sitting in front of our TV or sitting in front of our computer. So to get out there and, and do this type of thing, I would say if you don't have a passion, this would be where I would start. But I, like I said, passion is different for everybody. And, and I mentioned the comfort because we get lulled into complacency. We get too comfortable with our surroundings and therefore we have nothing that inspires us. Um, part of why I get outdoors and challenge myself, and you'll see me winter camp and you'll see me, and you'll see me use minimal equipment and, and uh, kind of stress myself, which looks like it's unnecessary. But if you don't experience discomfort, then you don't appreciate comfort. If we're in a sterile environment, uh, you know, 22 degrees Celsius temperature all the time, year round, we're indoors, we're not as affected by light. When the sun goes down, we flick on a light switch. We don't get into the natural rhythms of nature. I think we're really missing out on something. So we might have our indoor passions. You might be passionate about playing video games. You might be passionate about uh, writing or reading or any kind of uh, sedentary pastime, which I think is great if you're passionate about that. Hey, passion is different for everybody and that's what uh, excites you and that's what makes you get up in the morning. That's fantastic. Uh, but if it's um, not enough, then I suggest getting outdoors and doing some of this kind of stuff. Uh, but that passion to me is the number one key. It's the number one key to success and, and uh, happiness. And if you can, and I really urge everybody to find their passion. You know, one of those passions obviously is family. My wife and my kids are my absolute priority. They're my number one th reasons to do anything. In fact, a lot of what I do even here is to motivate them, for them to be proud of me. And it, in fact, that it makes me a better person because it makes me feel confident and, and happy. I'm therefore a better father and a better husband. And, you know, despite the fact that I'm always looking for something new and looking for change, that doesn't apply to family and it doesn't apply to my relationship with my wife. I'm extremely happy with my wife and we have a fantastic relationship and I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's my number one priority. So all of these other things are passions, but you can be passionate for many things. And passion for a loved one, I think, is a uh, top priority. Um, but you have to make time for yourself and you have to follow passions that don't involve other people. <laughs>